Unmanned aircraft are getting more affordable. Companies are pushing the boundaries of drone technology. Now that includes protecting nature. Jeff Begay shows us how a group near Denver is finding new use for its drones 9,000 miles away. He's in Morrison, Colorado. Jeff, good morning. Good morning. Here in the U.S., the FAA is still working on regulations and standards for the use of drones like that one. But overseas, they're already flying in Africa over game parks, tracking wildlife, sometimes at night using thermal imaging. With an eye in the sky, drones like that one can do things that humans could never do. Launching. Just as a slingshot tosses a rock, a drone can be launched into the sky. This one soared over Red Rocks Park just outside of Denver. This drone or unmanned aerial vehicle has also been flown in Africa. In places like Namibia where drones have been purchased to monitor game parks and to track poachers. The poachers out there know that there's something in the sky that's looking for them. Crawford Allen is with the World Wildlife Fund. We think it is going to be an important tool that will help produce far more effectiveness in protecting these precious species. Good job, Chris. The World Wildlife Fund is working with the government of Namibia by providing technical help as the country's park rangers learn how to fly the drones. We have the terrain data in here. This $20,000 eye in the sky can track elephants and rhinos. By traveling above the herds, the UAV doesn't disturb the habitat, except in rare cases like when this Marshall Eagle thought it was prey. The drone was actually a falcon. At least that's what Chris Miser called it when the former Air Force engineer came up with the design. His company took flight three years ago. It's another technology that's going to change the way we do business in the world, uh, just like the Internet or cell phones or anything along those lines. If it allows people to save money, save lives, and create jobs, then it's definitely going to have its place. It's finding a home in parts of the world where high-resolution cameras on drones can cover a lot of ground by capturing hundreds of images. These drones can obviously do things that humans could never do. Correct. Uh, they they able to see at night. Uh, they're able to be incredibly quiet, so you can't detect them. In the U.S., the technology has led to a boom that is creating legal challenges to the FAA's limits on commercial use. It may be another year and a half before regulations and standards are in place. With their focus now on Africa, the World Wildlife Fund is counting on the technology to be a model of future conservation efforts in the U.S. as well. It's important that the message goes out that these can be used for a positive good. These aren't weapons of destruction. These are weapons that in this case are going to help save species from extinction and also keep rangers alive on the ground. So it's really critical. The idea of using drones for conservation efforts is being endorsed by Google. The company has given the World Wildlife Fund a $5 million grant over three years for their work with drones in Namibia. Nora? All right. You know, Jeff everybody knows we're going to need some kind of regulation, but it is fascinating to think yeah. about all the possible uses of drones. Of drones. You know? It's incredible. Do you want one? I do. I, do. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I kind, of, I kind of do, too. I got hooked after your piece yeah. that you did with Jeff Bezos, I yeah. thought. For 60 minutes, I thought that was a cool thing. Very cool indeed.